Local fallout from atomic attack. Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory of the University of California. This booklet, prepared in the public interest with the aid of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory's health division, is intended primarily for those who have expressed a need for a simplified introduction to the problems of local fallout and survival. For a more detailed treatment, contractor for the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, Los Alamos, New Mexico, February 1962. This is a city. An atomic bomb is falling toward it. Many persons will die in the blast. Hours after the explosion, many miles from the city, other persons will be in danger of injury or death because of the same bomb. This booklet is about the second kind of danger, called fallout. A nuclear explosion makes a cloud. The cloud may rise as high as 15 miles or more above the Earth. In the cloud are many tiny radioactive particles and also many larger particles of dirt and dust drawn up from the ground. As the cloud cools, many of the small radioactive particles become attached to the large dust particles. Very small particles in the cloud will float like smoke. The bigger and heavier particles of dirt and dust start falling back to Earth, bringing radioactive materials with them. The cloud will now move in whatever direction the wind carries it. The wind at high altitudes is usually different in both speed and direction from the wind near the ground. The fallout may reach you on the ground in less than an hour, or it may not reach you for many hours. This depends on your distance from the explosion and the speed of the wind. Twelve hours after the explosion, most of the bigger particles have come to Earth. This is local fallout. Local fallout comes only from surface or low altitude explosions. It falls only along the path of the cloud. It falls only within a few hundred miles of the explosion, sometimes only within a hundred miles or less. If your home is in the path of local fallout, the radioactive material reaching the earth may be dangerous to your health or your life. If fallout particles remain in contact with the skin, they may cause burns. People who have been outdoors in fallout should wash, with special attention to their hair. The particles of fallout cannot penetrate anything, but the invisible radiation from them can. Small amounts of radiation won't hurt you, but large amounts may injure you or kill you. Your house will give you some protection, and this may or may not be sufficient to prevent injury. Heavy dense materials such as iron or concrete will stop radiation more effectively than light materials such as pumice block or wood. For the same thickness, solid concrete gives better protection than adobe, and adobe gives better protection than wood. If fallout is coming your way, you should seek some kind of protection. You should get as far away from the radioactive fallout particles as you can. You should get behind thick, heavy walls. Special shelters give better protection than houses. If you are interested in building a shelter, you should consult your local civil defense authorities. Most of the fallout particles will remain where they land, on the ground or on your roof, but the radiation from them will get weaker as time passes. It may be safe to go outdoors again after you have spent a few hours or days in your house or shelter. It is preferable not to eat foods which have been left exposed and which may contain large amounts of fallout material. But food contaminated by germs is more dangerous than food contaminated with radioactive materials. Raw fruits and vegetables from trees and gardens will be completely safe, but should probably be washed. Milk or meat from domestic animals will be perfectly safe if the animals appear healthy. It is preferable to use water from covered sources, but no serious effects will result from drinking water even if it contains some fallout. The best protection against local fallout is world peace. If that fails, it is important that you survive to rebuild. In the event of nuclear warfare, Life will be changed for many people. There may be no electricity or gas, and gasoline may be difficult to obtain. The dangers and problems of fallout may be very much less than the later difficulties during recovery from a nuclear war. Your continuing survival may depend on advanced planning and preparations.